it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. Following last month's military incursion into northern Syria by Turkey and fighters associated with the Free Syrian Army, the dynamics on the ground have changed dramatically. While full-fledged clashes between the Turkish military and Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces have so far been kept at a minimum, the situation is still incredibly fluid and tense as fuck. So, to try to make a bit more sense of this complicated situation, I recently caught up with a spokesperson from the International Freedom Battalion, a brigade of foreign fighters who have traveled to Syria to support the Rojava revolution. Hey y'all, how the fuck are you? Doing great, thanks for having us. So, I understand you're in Syria at the moment. Without giving away too much info, whereabouts in the country are you speaking from? We're currently speaking to you from the outskirts of Mandiz where we are holding a defensive position and waiting to be sent on the next operation, hopefully to al -Bab. What the fuck made you decide to go fight in Syria? There are many of us with varying reasons for joining. Someone to help defend the revolution, someone military training, someone to understand revolutionary armed struggle in the hopes of aiding their own struggles back home. But the one reason that links everyone in this battalion is that everyone came here for political reasons, which is to say, we all recognize Rojava as one of the most important revolutionary struggles of our time. What has surprised you about your time there? The hospitality of the Kurds and our communist comrades, the kindness and support for the SDF shown by the people, especially those in Manby City, and the vast array of things that can be learned here about the revolutionary struggle. Could you tell us a bit about your unit, what is the political makeup of your group, and what's your relationship with other members of the International Brigade, the YPG and PYD? The International Freedom Battalion was created by several Turkish revolutionary parties, the most significant being the MLKP, Berg and Tico, along with other international militants and groups to foster revolutionary internationalist links to Rojava. Except the aforementioned party's cadre, we are comprised of anarchists, socialists and communists from around the world. We are currently west of the Euphrates, which means we are under the control of the Syrian Democratic Forces, whose largest component is the YPG. When we are east of the Euphrates, we are under YPG control, but have internal autonomy on how we organize ourselves. As for the PYD, it is the diplomatic political wing of the YPG. Up until recently, you were preparing to attack Al Raqqa, the capital of Daesh's so-called caliphate. But after Turkey's incursion into Syria, you changed your plans and headed up to Mandij. What was your motivation for this? And was this something you decided for yourselves or was this requested of you? A part of our battalion had been holding a frontline position 50 kilometers north of Raqqa, south of the city of Saluk, with the objective of holding a strategic road and stopping any Daesh infiltrations or attacks. At the same time, another part of our battalion was fighting in Manbij since mid-June in both the outskirts and the city centre. After SDF's victory and the liberation of the city, the International Freedom Battalion was asked to hold a number of positions in the broad defensive lines outside of Manbij and was able to double its force in Manbij by merging with the troops from the Raqqa front south of Saluk. We are a military force which means we must follow orders that are given to us. But we can and do petition commanders for orders, like going to the front or joining some of our other forces together. Turkish shit eating President Tayyip Erdogan has come out and declared that he considers anyone fighting with the Kurds in Syria to be terrorists, no matter their country of origin. Are you worried about the prospect of direct clashes with the Turkish armed forces? In fact, a spokesperson of the AKP specifically mentioned the International Freedom Battalion by name in, in his statement declaring all Europeans fighting in it as terrorists. We immediately responded and produced a video which you can find on Facebook and YouTube by searching IFB response to Erdogan. In it we point out the audacity of Erdogan daring to call us terrorists when he has been a long time business partner and supporter of Daesh, Al Nusra and other similar groups. And we made it clear that we are all here to fight for the revolution and we will do so to defend it against any enemy. Many supporters of the Rojava revolution have long been weary of the Kurds' tactical alliance with the United Snakes and Russia, believing that once Daesh has been wiped out, the Kurds will be thrown under the bus. How have fighters on the ground viewed this arrangement? And were people surprised by the sudden shift in policy that has followed Turkey's ground incursion? The fact of the matter is that whether anybody likes it or not, war involves strategies and tactics. The Syrian conflict has many layers, and is taking place within a, a complicated matrix of conflicting interests of global and regional powers, often functioning as a proxy war. It is highly characterized by volatile tactical alliances, where each party tries to use and manipulate the other to its advantage. 
advantage, either for strategic gains or in some cases just for survival. And there is an overall widespread distrust between everyone, such as the relation of the YPG and the SDF with the US-led coalition. The coalition's aid is always restrained and limited, and the YPG is constantly pursuing a different agenda on the ground than the one the coalition is pushing for. The fighters on the ground see American support as a military necessity in order to have much less casualties. And to say that it should have been refused is equivalent with saying that more of us should have died. This does not mean that the revolutionaries here have any misconceptions about America's intentions or are not critical or look favorably upon US imperialism. They are well aware and are prepared for this support to waver at any time. Anything else you want to add? We want to commemorate our fallen comrades in the battle for Manbij. Ayla Matash, who was martyred right here at this very point we are currently sitting, when an Aspicino missile came through the window right below me, exploding inside. Shevda Chadas, who was martyred during an offensive operation in the last village before Manbij, when a bomb exploded inside a house she was controlling. Our martyrs live forever. Long live the revolution.